Hello, and welcome to another Math with Miss B. In this video, we will be talking about using the distributive property, also known as the distributive law of multiplication and division. In the previous two videos, we have looked at using the order of operations and substituting into a algebraic expression in order to solve. So this is a way to simplify algebraic expressions when we're not given what the variables equal. And it is one of the first properties that we use that works outside of the order of operations. So first, let's start by defining what is the distributive property. And according to the textbook McGraw-Hill, it defines the distributive property as to multiply a sum by a number and to multiply each of the add-ins of the sum, so the two numbers being added, by the, uh, the number outside of the parentheses. So in a very basic example, using a, b, and c for any number, a times b plus c in parentheses is the same as a times b plus a times c. We can use the same with subtraction. So if we have a times b minus c in parentheses, this is the same as a times b minus a times c. So our first example, we're just going to show what this looks like using modeling. Now, when we model, we set it up a lot like we do with multiplication modeling, when we would split up the hundreds, tens, and ones. But in this case, we want to split up the two numbers being added along the top. So you have three plus six, and then along the side what we're multiplying. Okay, so we have four times three plus four times six. So four times three is 12, four times six is 24, and then to get our final answer we would add 12 plus 24, and we get 36. Now, if we were to have followed the order of operations, we would have three plus six is nine, bring down my times four, and I'd still get 36. Okay, so this is a way to simplify our work and sometimes to make the work easier. Now let's look at a few examples. Okay, so the first one is two times five plus seven. Now we can follow the order of operations and add five and seven, then multiply by two. But in this case, we want to use the distributive property. That means to share the two that's being multiplied. So to rewrite this whole thing, we end up with two times five plus two times seven. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 times 7 is 14, 10 plus 14 is 24. Now you don't always have to write out the multiplication step. You can combine that as you go. So let's look at an example with the negative. I like to draw my arrows so I know what I'm multiplying. And in this case, I'm going to underline to subtract 5 and think of it as a negative 5. So negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. My integer rules tell me different signs subtract. So 24 minus 20 is 4. I have more negatives, so I have a negative answer. Generally, though, we would use the order of operations when we just have numbers and operators. However, we can see with this third example that we have a variable, and the variable does not have a value. We don't know what x equals. So we can use the distributive property to simplify. Again, I'm going to underline my negative 6 my subtract 6 and think of it as negative 6. So 3 times 4 is 12. Bring your x. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. 
This is in simplified form because if we think about this 12x, it's really 12 times x minus 18. And according to the order of operations, we can't skip and subtract the 18 from the 12 because multiplication has to be completed first. So this is my actual final answer. Okay, we have three more examples. Okay, we're increasing in complexity as we go. So not every distributive property is written with the number being multiplied at the front. Sometimes they're written at the end. Okay, so in this case, it's written after my variable and numbers being added. Okay, I'm gonna underline the negative five in. I'm gonna underline the negative three so that I know they go together. Negative three times negative five is a positive 15. Bring down my M. Negative three times positive one is negative three. So my final answer is 15M minus three. Okay, on to the next one. So with this one, I just have a negative. There's no number with it. So whenever we have a negative alone or a variable alone, we can put in a one. A one is understood to be here. So rather than just multiplying by a negative, we are going to multiply by negative one. Okay, drawing my arrows, I'm gonna underline all of this. Okay, so negative one times six, is a negative six. Negative one times negative four is a positive four. Bring down my x. Now this is a good answer, but generally speaking, especially when you get into more complicated mathematics, this is a good answer. It is correct, but it's not the best answer. The best answer is listing the variable first. Okay, so generally, when we line up our numbers at the end, the variable, the number with the variable comes first, the number by itself comes second. And we'll look at that more in the combining like terms video, which will come up later this week. Final example, one half times six X minus 10. So I'm gonna underline my minus 10 and think of it as a negative. So one half times six X, one half times 10. So one half times six X, what is one half of six? That's three, bring down my X. One half times negative 10, well, what's half of negative 10? That would be a negative five, and this is my final answer. Thank you for checking in in this Math with Miss V video. I hope it has helped you understand the distributive property.